Welcome y'all, it's Wes with DIY Food Plot Pro. Thanks so much for joining us. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about food plot location. I'm gonna tell you how I determine where these plots go from a hunting standpoint and also a ag standpoint. This is a side of it that a lot of folks may not really be aware of that can really influence the success or failure of a food plot. My name is Wes, I run the channel DIY Food Plot Pro. I've got a Bachelor of Science in Agronomy degree. I farm for a living and I have an 1800 acre whitetail deer hunting outfitter in Western Kentucky where we cannot bait. So we rely on these food plots to hunt the whitetails that we are blessed to hunt here in Western Kentucky. It's the time of year that many of us are beginning to think about food plots for 2024. A lot of folks have it on their mind to maybe start a new food plot, maybe move a food plot from an area that was maybe not as productive as what they hoped it would be. I've got three main variables that I look at before I start any design of a food plot. Then I've got one more from an ag side that is just as important as the first three. When all four of these line up, then all of a sudden you have an absolute gem of a food plot. If you're missing one or two, it can really influence how successful that plot is. The first one that I'm looking at when I'm looking at a food plot is gonna be the access. I can have the best food plot location in the world. And if I don't have good access to it, um, you might as well not even plant it. Because if you can't go in there and hunt and come in and out, without spooking a bunch of deer, your hunt's over with before it's ever got going good. Unless you're lucky enough to be able to kill that buck in one or two hunts and you're done. Because if you don't, you have to continue going in, spooking deer in and out. The deer are going to leave the area. They're gonna leave your farm. So access is the main one. That's the very first one that I look at when I'm setting up my properties, clients' properties for food plots. Access has to be the very first one. So many times I see it, I know you guys see it, you have this honey hole of a food plot in the dead center of your farm or maybe on the very opposite end of your farm and it looks so good. And, it, and the signs around it, maybe it's surrounded by bedding and it's a little two acre field and, and you're like, man, this is where it's at. And, and maybe it is. But if you can't get in there without busting everything, I would rather not plant that, as I would try to plant that, try to congregate deer, and then teach those deer that I'm hunting them as I'm coming in and out. The second thing that I'm looking at when I'm setting up a, a whitetail food plot on a farm is gonna be the predominant wind that I have in that area. Most of the time where I'm at in Western Kentucky, we have some form of south or westerly wind blowing the majority of the time. That's not to say that we don't get some north, we don't get some east, but all that kind of plays in to how I set these farms up. If there is a way that I can set it up to where I can hunt a south or a north, that's what I'm going to do. On my farms, I try to have a stand, a quality stand for every single wind. Some farms I can't. Some farms you set up and they don't set up for an east wind. Some farms don't set up for a westerly wind. Most of the farms that, that I have that are around 100 acres do set up fairly well for at least two or three winds. And a lot of times you get one left out. Here in Western Kentucky, we're looking at a south-southwest wind. So that means for me, I'm gonna say seven out of 10 days, I'm gonna have that wind direction. So I'm gonna be able to maximize my time in that stand by setting that food plot up on a south-southwestern wind. A lot of us like to hunt those cold fronts. That's gonna be a north, northeast, northwest type of wind. So I definitely try to set those up as well, but I realize going in, I'm not gonna to get to hunt that north wind stand as much as I'm gonna to get to hunt the south wind stand. The third thing that I'm looking for when I'm setting up a food plot is what I call the huntability. What are the chances that a mature buck is going to step foot in that plot during the daylight? And I'm talking outside of the rut. So when I'm looking at this type of setting on a farm, I'm looking for the thickest areas that I can get. There's a lot of good bedding around. There's a lot of cruising going on around there. And I want that food plot as close to quality cover as I can possibly get it. So if I have a good thicket going on two or three sides of this, that sets up really, really well for a food plot location to go in that area. The closer that I can get, to high quality cover, I better my chances of a mature buck 
coming out into daylight on that food plot. If we get out more towards the open where we have a lot less cover, I feel like our chances go down, especially as hunting pressure kicks up, maybe from our surrounding hunters, it's much more difficult to get those big mature white tails to come into areas that are more open where maybe he's bedding a long ways that has to make it to you. The closer you can get to that bedding, the better odds you have of that buck coming in during daylight. Now, a lot of times this falls in with access. A lot of times these places don't mesh real well. And that's what I was meaning when I'm saying all four of them coming together, you've got a gym sure enough. If you can get three or four of these things or four out of four of these things, you can really expect high quality results but huntability and how safe does a mature buck feel in that area makes a huge difference whether you have a good chance of killing a mature buck in that food plot or not. The last thing, and I think it's likely probably the most important, and this is more from the ag side. We're on the highest hill on the farm right here. Down below, we got a bottle. You'll see somebody map out and they're gonna put a food plot right on the top of the ridge, right? And why do they do that? The biggest majority of the reason why folks wanna try to stay on high ridges is because of the wind. A lot of us know if we've ever hunted down in those type of scenarios, down in those bottoms, you have swirling winds, you've got wind current, you've got a lot of weird wind events going on down in those bottoms. The higher you can get up on these ridges, the more consistent the wind, okay? And, and that's just because wind is just like water, okay? So if you got water and you got rocks, you got a waterfall, you'll see that air kind of swirling at the bottom. Same way with wind. Wind does the exact same thing. I've got a farm that's a flat little bottom and it goes up on a big ridge. South wind is the best to hunt. I would put my hunters in there with a south wind and they'd call me and they'd say, Wes, I've got a north wind here blowing completely the wrong direction exactly the way the bucks are coming from. And it's because that wind's coming off that hill and it's coming right back into it. We've got to think of wind currents as a big, big part of setting up a stand, setting up a food plot location. We can look like our access is golden, like our huntability is golden, like our predominant wind is golden. But then all of a sudden, when you get down in these bottoms, you get into swirling winds and you can think I've got a perfect wind to hunt this food plot. You go down in there and try to hunt that food plot and you find out real quick that the wind is completely wrong for where that is. And that's because of those wind currents, the wind drafts, they can do a lot of weird things down in those bottoms. So a lot of people like to concentrate up on the high ridges. And that's a great thing. I, I have a lot of farms that I do the exact same thing on. But from a farming agronomic standpoint, what's gonna be your better soil? What's gonna give you a higher quality food plot? Is it gonna be up on the very tip top of the highest ridge on the farm? or is it gonna be down in the bottom? In my area, 10 times out of 10, it's gonna be the bottoms. The bottoms are much, much, much more fertile soil than the very tip top of a top of a ridge. The soil's not as deep, it's typically rockier. The top soil's just not as much there as what's down in those high fertile bottoms. So down in there, we're gonna put a lot less fertilizer. We're gonna get higher quality plots even if we put less fertilizer. We're gonna have to put a lot more inputs on a farm that's on the top of a ridge rather than down in a bottom. Now I have some of both. I have a lot of farms where I have food plots on the ridges and I have a pile of farms where the food plots are down in the bottoms. And there's usually somewhere in the bottoms I've learned over time that I can get to get that steady wind. Now it may not be exactly where you want the stand at, but typically there is a spot somewhere in that bottom where you can go and you can get out of that swirling wind so i typically like bottoms better than i like ridges they both have pros and cons if i'm trying to raise a food plot up here in this ridge i'm going to have a lot more inputs i'm going to have a lot more fertilizer i'm not going to be able to withstand a drought as good i'm going to have a lot more time and effort up here and likely less quality food plot than what i would down in there if everything was the same, the fertility was the same that I'm putting down, the management was the same, I'm going to expect much more growth down in that better soil. And typically when I do this, I'm going to go to that web soil survey and I'm going to map this whole thing out. I'm going to map out this area, I'm going to map out that area, and we're going to see the difference on how much more productive that ground is than what this ground is. And then I'm gonna be able to make my decision on where I'm gonna put these plots at, where I'm gonna setting myself up for the best results. If you need extra help with your food plots, I have a website set up, www.diyfoodplotpro.com. 
You can go to the website. You can sign up for a yearly or a monthly subscription. You can email me your questions. I will personally answer them to the best of my ability. It's a really neat resource that a lot of people will find really handy. Having somebody in their pocket that they text your email and say, hey, I got a question here on this food plot. Something's not right. I'm not sure about this. What do you think on it? I think that's really an invaluable tool that a lot of folks could use to better their food plots. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Smash that like and subscribe button if you hadn't already.